fellas. Welcome back to Fact Your Opinions. The internet is a big, scary, just abyss of a place. It really is. There's just monsters all around telling you half-truths. And it takes a little bit of a disciplined, distinguished eye and ear to learn what's real and what isn't. Welcome to Cody's Fact Your Opinions where I, the influencer, will tell you, the viewer, what to think. I hope your mind is open and ready to receive teachings. We're gonna look over some opinions from some of our very good friends on Twitter.com. Everybody's friends on Twitter.com. And we're gonna say, that's real, or mm, not this time. Boom, first up, oh, look at that! Ella Fox says, Super Mario Odysseys and Breath of the Wild's impact on gaming has been and will be overall negative. While they brought a renewed focus on exploration, they've also de-incentivized challenge and simplified their core gameplay, which is platforming and puzzles for a recognized pattern into Get Reward Loop. Fellas, is this a fun fact or an outrageous opinion? Has Nintendo ruined gaming again? By simplifying it. No. No, they didn't. No, those games are good. Well, one of them is good. I agree that they sort of feel a little... How do I put it? They almost feel like they're inspired by, like, mobile stuff. You know what I mean? Like, when you finish a mobile level and you get, like, three stars or one star or whatever. And you're like, mm hmm And then you go on to the next one. That's kind of the same feeling I get when I played Breath of the Wild or when I played Galaxy. Where it's... Or Odyssey. Where it's like, I walk around, I get my star easily and for free and then I just move on to the next thing. That said, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think 64 is a lot similar, and people love that game. And I also think it's better than the alternative, which is Galaxy. Galaxy is like, get from point A to point B. I'm playing Mario 3D World now, and it's get point A to point B. And it's fun, but the whole time I'm playing it, I'm like, it, it's, it's a different kind of fun. And I don't really like it as much. I think Odyssey and uh, Breath of the Wild are probably going to shift things more than we realize i think i agree but at the same time i think by the time everybody else catches up in that sort of thing uh nintendo will have another thing i feel like it's 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 if other games pick it up that's not nintendo's fault is it ubisoft's fault for coming up with towers that you climb and then you can see the whole landscape what do you think shannon wants to know and says the reason there will never be a genuinely good video game movie, I guess they forgot the word game, right? Is because movies are inherently linear. A lot of video games work because it's possible to go off the required path and make your own experience. No two people play a game the same way, even to get the same ending. You think that's real? Damn, it's, it's a little bit more split. Not quite getting fed to wolves like the last one. Well, I'm happy to tell you guys, you're right again. Yeah, that's not real. Plenty of games are mad linear. You can't say that people play the game differently because they make slightly different choices. Let's say they make a Bioshock movie, right? Are you really gonna say that it's not a good movie because he used the shock hand instead of the bees? I don't think that choice is so sort of tied to gaming intrinsically that it you, you can't make a movie about it. I think what matters is the overall story, the themes, but it really does depend on the game, the movie that you wanna make out of the game. Are you really telling me you have too much choice in a Mario game to make a movie out of it? The Sonic movie had nothing to do with Sonic the Hedgehog, and people liked it. I really liked the old Mortal Kombat movies. I liked the old Super Mario movie. I don't give a shit if it's not accurate. If I wanted accuracy, I'd play the game. I like it. I feel like games that are inherently like super structured could absolutely be a movie and even if not who cares who cares if they're wrong i think the bigger problem is games don't really have that great stories red dead could be a movie but why again why why would you do it the games are already a movie why would you make a last of us movie the game is a movie i'm getting off track this is an opinion thank you for submitting it oh it's our good friend vera Hello, Viram. Viram is a game designer by the, I think. I know he's an anime. Viram says, true depth in fighting games is one of the most oddly debated subjects because the overwhelming majority of players don't come close to scratching that ceiling of depth. Rather, I believe players want to simply play games that feel smart or strong or flexible. What do you think? 
Uh, I don't even, I can't even come up with like a content way to argue this. How would you even argue against this? I don't know. I feel like whenever I go on certain fighting game collection areas for the commune, uh, everybody talks about depth. They want deeper games. They want games to be more intricate. They don't want them to be as simple. Feels like anybody can win. But I feel like that is such a small minority of players and really they're voicing their frustrations not with something that they really have issue with like grasping. It's more the lack of flexibility, choice, strength that Viram is talking about here. It's a difficult thing to balance, but I feel like those people are trying to come at the game mechanics and saying they're not deep enough, they're not interesting enough, but really their issue is not having enough choice to play around it. And also, who gives a shit? Competitive players are a vast minority. I think Mortal Kombat is now the most selling, like the latest Mortal Kombat is one of the biggest selling fighting games of all time, something like that. You know how many people play in tournaments? Itty bitty. And I think you can find this anywhere. I mean, if, if you just look at tier list discussions, most people still, still, to this day, people don't know that tier lists are literally only at the top level of competition. It doesn't matter if you can beat your friend in the basement. This is, I, I think this is true. I feel like this is something that we talk about pretty regularly, you know? Uh, it doesn't matter how good your, your player is, your character is. Tier lists only matter at the top level. And a lot of people think they're at the top level. Even if they're not. Uh-oh, Nintendo hater. Ring the alarm. <laughs> Brooklyn Willis says, Nintendo won't make a technologically strong console because if they did, it would actually have to try making a AAA game. They are incapable of making something on the level of The Last of Us, God of War, or Horizon. Truing? Nintendo fun? True, but good? Most people are going to say this isn't real. Most people are wrong. Nintendo can't do it. They can't do it. They absolutely can't do it. If the years and years of Pokemon lying in stagnation for as long as it has, Pokemon is in the same company. I don't give a shit. Here's the thing. A Nintendo AAA game is not the same as a Sony AAA game, right? They're just not the same. They're incomparable. The designs are totally different. Does that mean they're worse? No. But Nintendo has consistently been able to hide behind the veil of lowered hardware. They're making toys. Everybody else is making PCs and systems or whatever. Nintendo is making toys and they can just put on that hat and they don't have to make the super graphical stuff. Their gameplay is the focus, which is honestly probably how it should be anyway. But could they make a Last of Us? Could they make a God of War? Absolutely not. No, no. No, no, no. Does that make them worse? No. It's a different design philosophy. That's all. Maybe they have the talent to pull it off, but would they do it all the way through? Would they, like, they have no experience in it. They've gone down a totally different path. They would have to respect totally into this. And this isn't a bait. I don't, I don't get why people think that whenever I say something that they disagree with, it's bait. I'm not baiting and it's not contrarian. I do not think Nintendo could do, like, something like these three games. Now, does that mean that their games are not more fun? No, their games are absolutely more fun. I would play Mario Odyssey over probably most of these games. I mean, like, I, I just, maybe, maybe it has to do with the whole, you know, east-west split. Will's right. Will's right. Not that Nintendo's bad. Oh, true, PS2 do got the best games. Unlockable things in games that are for fun, like costumes, multiplayer levels, etc. need to go away. There's no need for things to be stuck behind an arbitrary achievement anymore, especially when I just want to play a party game with friends. Unlocks? Bad? Think about what they're talking about here. They're saying uh, hidden characters or costumes or things like that need to go away in party games. You need to read that, that, that part in particular. And while you noodle this one, one thing that you can always unlock is grade A for... God damn it, I'm turning these off. One thing you can always unlock is fresh, hot, triple-A, grade A, good uh, content on the channel. All you have to do is subscribe right now. Just go right below the video and hit that red button. I'm not going to continue until you subscribe, by the way. You don't get to find out the answer until you subscribe.
everybody on YouTube, you get to subscribe to the channel for free and beat all of these suckers in chat. They're paying me $5 a month for this. Can you believe that? $5 a month? That's insane when you could do it for free. That's nuts. Subscribe to the YouTube right now. Kamui says unlockable things suck. What do you think? Fact or opinion? Ah! No, it's fake. Yeah. No, unlocking shit is dope. No, I, I understand the idea of, like, when you want to play a party game, you want everything unlocked from the start, right? But also, the feeling of getting that shit feels so good. I think it's a mix. I think it should be easy to do, but you shouldn't get it right away. I played a lot of Super Mario Party when it came out. I never unlocked... Was it Diddy? I forget what it was. There's a... You have to unlock characters in Super Mario Party. One of them is you have to play a really shitty minigame like eight times. Like, it's a fucking party game. It's Mario Party. I don't want to do that. Don't make me unlock characters. That said... If you had a system in Mario Party where you could buy funny outfits for your characters with stars that you want in past games, I would like that. I think they have to be extra. You, they can't be anything that affects the game directly. So if we're talking about characters or levels or things like that, no. But if we're talking about, like, cosmetics, yeah, sure. Why not? So, no, I think this is fake. But I hear what you're saying. Ring Fit Adventure is the best RPG released in 20 years. JRPG. I've enjoyed my time with it far more than any Square Enix game I've ever played. Is Ring Fit Adventure the best RPG? JRPG, let's make that clear. JRPG, not RPG, okay? Skyrim came out in the last 20 years. That wins, right, Shake. Look at all the facts here, damn. 53, 46, it's starting to go the other way though. It's starting to go in the other direction. This is, of course, an opinion. Ring Fit Adventure isn't a JRPG because it's not 90 hours. I got fit very quickly. I beat that game in like like 20 hours total. So it's not a JRPG. It's actually better because it's shorter. If there were more game to it, it might get worse. That's the thing about JRPGs is they start fun and then they shit out later. Ring Fit starts fun and then you lose 20 pounds and you're like, oh my god, that was great. And then it stops. And then you're like, I'm done. Coney, all JRPGs aren't 50 plus hours. Name three. Chrono Trigger. No. The game with 50 endings? Hmm. I'm looking at it right now. Chrono Trigger is 44 and a half hours to beat. Chrono Trigger is 44 and a half hours. Which is basically 50. No, that's basically 50. In the 90s, that's 50. In the 90s, that's 50, because it's, it's a lot of the time on the, on the Super Nintendo, like, it had to be condensed, so the Super Nintendo couldn't fit as much data. If you had this on a PS1, it would have been way, yeah, see, then they made Chrono Trigger on PS1, look at that, they have more data, they have more data to play with, so they were able to fulfill their vision, that's what you have to understand. Ring Fit, you can beat. In just 34 hours. <laughs> just 34. This is if you want to do everything. No, this is if you want to do every exercise and, and get all the, the food, all the smoothies. Yeah, that doesn't count. It's not as important in Ring Fit because, like, the difference between a completionist and a main story is, like, three exercises. It's like, do I do this or this? That's not the same. In Chrono Trigger, you're unlocking new characters and pathways and endings. Anyway, no, that's not real. Uh, Ring Fit is not a JRPG. Sorry. Zack! Pokemon Legends Arceus is the direction Pokemon should have gone since the beginning. And I'm glad they're doing it now rather than never. Listen, did you guys see the Pokemon Direct with that new open world shit? What'd you think? Based or cringe? Yeah, this is true. Yeah, I don't know what the hell Pokemon's been doing forever. Now, the issue is they're kind of late. They've been behind the curve for 15 years. So for them to do it now, it looks so bad. Frame rate has gone awful. Like, it just looks terrible. And people are like, well, I'm glad they're doing it now. Me too. But also, like, what? I, I might have still been into, into Pokemon if they were interested. But they were all the same. They just kept adding little creatures. I, mean, I don't care about this. This sucks. It comes out in a year? 
Yeah, but they're going to have to add all the Pokemon to it. How long do you think that takes? You know how many Pokemon on there are? Like, like 300. There's a lot. They got to add every single one. People will be so mad. Pokemon is probably going in a better direction now. Will they keep steering the ship that way? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I won't be on the ride anyway, though. I haven't played that in years. And I don't plan to. It's cringe. Here we go. This is the one we led the tweet off of. There will never be another reason for anyone to ever buy an Xbox. There is no reason to ever buy an Xbox. Ever. Never, ever. This is actually pretty contentious. Chad is, Chad is lit up now. Hmm... Yeah, okay. I, I think we're, we're we're locked in. I think we see what it is. Uh, so, this is actually false. There is a reason to own an Xbox if you're poor or between jobs and can't afford a PC. An Xbox is a brilliant solution. It is. Because you don't have to upgrade it or anything. And then, think about it this way, when you're done and you get hired somewhere and can afford... A computer, you get to sell your Xbox to someone else who's down on their luck. Isn't that nice? You get to go onto Craigslist and give them your Xbox. Circle of life. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's truly beautiful. Someone said Xbox backwards compatibility goes hard. I can't think of one game on the Xbox I would like to play. Anyway, don't buy an Xbox. Unless, you know what? If you if you have to buy an Xbox, it's fine. Just do so with shame in your heart. Have your head held down and put it in a brown paper bag when you leave the store. So the kids don't see. Oh, starting off on the la on the on the on the best one. So I like this one a lot. There were two of these actually. There were two of these. And I wanna I wanna look at both of them. Okay? This might be the best one of the night. Nathan says communication from company to gamer and vice versa will always be one of the most beneficial things to do in creating a game that the majority will enjoy. Even if it ends up being a shitty game, feedback communication will always help more than hurt despite swaying good or bad. That's what that's what Nathan is saying. However, Piccolo goes to Burger King has a different perspective. Developers should stop listening to criticism. Everyone begged Nintendo to change the art style of Wind Waker when it came out, but years later, it's regarded as a masterpiece. People don't know what they want and always will complain, no matter what, no matter what's given to them. Two sides of the coin, right? Nathan back here says they should listen. Communication from company to gamer is important. It's one of the most beneficial things to do. Piccolo says, no, gamer's stupid. You shouldn't listen to them. They don't know what they want. And they're very reactive. Now, the question is, do you agree with this? Is this fact or opinion? It can't be both. Everybody in chat that's like, it's both. It literally can't be both. Should devs listen to gamers or not? In fact, let's, let's have a... Let, let me... Let me... Here, I'm going to change the poll to make it a little bit more understandable. How about that? We're just going to say, should devs listen to gamers? Yes or no? Period. Most people say yes. Most people are wrong. You're fucking wrong. You are fucking wrong. Developers are right. Devel developers have a vision. And I think it's more important to stay true to that vision than to put out a game that they think is fun. Something that they want to put out into the world because gamers are just going to want the same shit that they always get from other places. I've seen that happen so many times with games. Everybody hated Wind Waker when it got revealed. Fucking hated it. People just bitch at the first sign of anything that they don't like or that they're not familiar with. And even worse, people have different uh, priorities in terms of what they want to play, and they derive fun in different ways. And if you listen to a bunch of players about like what they think is fun and how you should change the game, you're going to get this bland, tasteless mess. It's more important that games sort of cater to a vision and maybe that vision is of the game, the director, or maybe it's just the team at large. I don't know. But that's more important to catering to gamers. Gamers are entitled. They ask for a lot. They ask for shit that would kill the game, usually. I mean, you see this in every fighting game. People who play the game are very bad at balancing it. Very bad. 
God awful. What about Smash? No, they shouldn't listen to us. I will never forget. I will never forget. I think when Ultimate came out, I did forget. I think when Ultimate or Smash 4 came out, I think it was Ultimate. One of the the prolific online DDD players made a post that was like a petition or a list of changes for Sakurai, and he wanted it to go all the way up the chain so Sakurai saw it, so DDD would be good. The fuck? Let a character be bad in a video game, or just don't play the game. There are exceptions. Rollback is important, but I don't think rollback is an issue with, like, players' choices or preferences as much as it is an issue with just Japan. They don't care. Japan is tiny. They don't give a shit about latency. Japan, Japan just has their ears closed. So I think that's different. But on the whole, don't listen to gamers. Listen to me! Thank you for tuning in to Factor Opinions. I hope I was able to influence your opinion today. If you'd like to be influenced some more, remember, you can always hit the subscribe button, and I'll tell you what to think every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Got him. Got him. Excellent CTA. Don't leave. Don't leave. I got something else coming up. It's not over. It's not over. Don't leave. I got something else, and I think you'll like it.